Hello everyone! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Teacher Angelica and I am here to help you learn science in your distance learning. Meanwhile, I'd like to thank everyone who watched my videos and subscribed to my channel. If you find my videos helpful, please don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you will be notified with my future science lessons. In my previous video, we described motion in terms of distance and displacement. After determining how far the object moves, the next question will be, how fast did the object move? This information can be provided by the object's speed and velocity. That's what we will be learning about today. Are you ready? Let's begin! People usually associate the term speed with fast-moving objects such as high-speed cars. Speed is the rate of distance covered at a given time. It indicates how fast an object is moving without referring to the direction of motion. Therefore, speed is considered as a scalar quantity. Speed can be measured by dividing the distance covered by an object over the time traveled, or S equals D over T. We can express speed in terms of meters per second, kilometers per hour, or miles per hour. Let's take a look at this example. John's home is 400 meters while Mary is 200 meters away from school. It took 400 seconds for John, while Mary needed 200 seconds to reach the school. What is their average speed? And who of them walks faster? Solving for Mary's speed, we have the given values. Distance equals 200 meters and time is equals to 200 seconds. What is required is the average speed and the formula is S equals d over t. Now we will substitute all the values. S equals 200 meters divided by 200 seconds. The answer is 1 and then we simply copy the units. As a result, Mary's average speed is 1 meter per second. Let's solve for John's speed this time. Distance is 400 meters and time is 400 seconds. And then we repeat the same process. So that's 400 meters divided by 400 seconds. The answer is one meter per second. Therefore, John walks as fast as Mary because both have the same speed of one meter per second which means that both John and Mary can cover a distance of one meter in just a second. Notice that in the problem, it requires us to solve for the average speed and not just speed. Why is this so? It is considered average speed because it represents the speed of the participant throughout his travel. During his travel, there were instants that his speed would vary. His speed at an instant is called instantaneous speed. For example, in this illustration, Mary's instantaneous speed in 20 seconds is 15 meters per second. The instantaneous speed may be equal, greater than or less than the average speed. Now, what if Mary's instantaneous speed are always the same all throughout the time she has traveled? When an object's instantaneous speed values are always the same, then it means that the object is moving with constant speed. We refer to this as constant motion. Where you will be and what time you will reach your destination is easily predicted when you move at a constant speed. Are you familiar with the speedometer? Of course, you've seen this in vehicles. 
Speedometer is a device used to measure the instantaneous speed of a vehicle. Speedometers are important to the drivers because they need to know how fast they are going so that they know if they are already driving beyond the speed limit or not. In describing the motion of an object, we do not just describe how fast the object moves. We also consider the direction to where it is going. When direction is associated with speed, it refers to the quantity known as velocity. Thus, velocity is speed in a given direction. It gives us an idea of how fast an object is moving and to which direction it moves. When direction is involved, we consider velocity as a vector quantity. It can be calculated using the equation velocity equals displacement divided by time or v equals d over t. Since velocity has direction, it uses displacement instead of distance. Notice that there is an arrow above the symbols. It only means both velocity and displacement are vector quantities. Let's take a look at this example to solve for velocity. George walks 250 meters north to a friend's house and walks another 750 meters in 200 seconds. What is George's average velocity? So, the given R initial position is 250 meters north, final position is 750 meters north, and the time is 210 seconds. What's required is the average velocity, so we use the formula V equals D over T. But before we solve for the average velocity, let us solve first for the displacement since it is not given in the problem. Do you still remember the formula in solving for displacement? That's right! Displacement equals final position minus initial position. So that's 750 meters minus 250 meters equals 500 meters north. Now we can solve for the average velocity. So let's substitute all the values. That's 500 meters divided by 210 seconds. The result is 2.38 meter per second and the direction is north. That means George's average velocity is 2.38 meter per second. The velocity of an object changes when the speed changes, the direction changes, or both the speed and direction change. That means if you're moving along at 30 meters per second and then you came to a bend in the road, your velocity changes because your direction changes. Let's have another example on how to solve speed and velocity. You decided to have a morning jog to keep your body fit. You jog 100 meters east in 150 seconds, made a left turn and jog 150 meters in 180 seconds, and finally made another left turn for 100 meters in 90 seconds. What is your average speed and what is your average velocity? In order to solve for the average speed, we need to solve first for the total distance in total elapsed time you traveled. So that's total distance equals 100 meters plus 150 meters plus 100 meters equals 350 meters. For time, we also simply just get its sum. So that's T equals 150 seconds plus 180 seconds plus 90 seconds equals 420 seconds. Now we can solve for the average speed by simply substituting all the values using the formula S equals D over T because we already have our distance and we already have our time. That's 350 meters divided by 420 seconds. We have 
average speed equals 0.83 meter per second. To solve for the average velocity, we need to determine first the displacement. If we look closely to the illustration, we know that the shortest distance from the initial and final positions is going this way, which is parallel to this side. Therefore, we assume that the displacement is also equal to 150 meters and the direction is going north. So, that's average velocity equals 150 meters north divided by 420 seconds. The result is 0.36 meter per second going north. That's it guys! Congratulations for making it this far in your distance learning. I'll see you next time for the last series of this video lesson which is describing motion in terms of acceleration. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share this video to your friends. I hope you guys learned from our lesson today. This is Teacher Angelica and I'll see you on my next video lesson. Bye!